All right, welcome to Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop here at the GeekWire offices in Seattle, and I'm talking with Andrew Edwards on the line. Andrew is down at E3 at the big video game convention. How's it going, Andrew? It's going very well. I'm here in Los Angeles, uh, here for E3, as you mentioned. Microsoft yesterday just announced a brand new console. Curious if you're excited about it. You know, the Xbox One X, not the S, the X. It's coming out in November for... 500 smackers it's uh it looks like a really cool console they're calling it the most powerful console ever made and it's it looks like it's tiny too it might be the tiniest console microsoft's ever made it's definitely the tiniest console they've ever made and it's it's interesting because it's smaller than the xbox one s but i saw them side by side not like touching each other or on top of each other but like within eight inches of each other and you can tell that the xbox one x is smaller but not buy a lot like you really have to look hard and be like oh okay i see it's a little bit this way um but yeah it's much more compact what stood out to me even more than that though was the fact that the xbox one s has all these ventilation holes around it on the sides on the back and on the top and on the xbox one x the new one which is like two times as powerful the top is completely closed there's no exhaust there at all because they're doing this um liquid vapor cooling on the uh, processor to keep it cool so that's also a first for consoles. So um, yeah, this is a pretty big, pretty big announcement. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that they typically reserve for like computer servers in data centers, but they're going to be putting this into a console. Yeah, and uh, so it's going to you know it's going to keep it cold, keep it. Basically, you need it's going to this thing's putting off a lot of heat, and they need it to keep it cool. And this is how they're doing. This is why it's so small and doesn't need as much exhaust because of this vapor chamber cooling, which we've never seen on a console before. So but we can jump into all these specs and talk about, you know, what sets it apart. You mentioned one thing, though, right off the bat that sets it apart is the price. It's $500, $499, comes out on November 7th. And that price is actually double because the Xbox One S just got a price cut yesterday. So the Xbox One S was $299, now it's $249. So it's half the price of the Xbox One X. Which, you know, it's when you think about it, like this console for five hundred dollars is very powerful and it's it's actually a good deal if you're a gamer and you like if you're a PC gamer and you want to build a PC that can do 4K at 60 frames per second, you're spending way more than five hundred dollars. So when you look at it that way, it's a good deal. But on the Xbox side of things, they play the exact same games. The Xbox One X just looks better and performs faster. Is that worth 250 extra dollars is that worth the price of two xbox one s's or do you just buy an xbox one s and say you know screw the higher resolution i just want to play games i think the answer from you would be yes right because you want to output to a 4k display that's right so if you have a 4k display it's almost like a no-brainer it's true 4k so it's, it's doing the full 4k resolution and it's locked at 60 frames per second which we haven't seen in fact the Xbox One S currently struggles to do 1080p at 60 frames per second. Uh, the 60 frame per second, like locking in that frame rate, it's pretty difficult. Even the PS4 Pro can't do 4K at 60 frames per second. So for someone like me who has a 4K TV and, you know, I'm an audio file and a video file, this thing does Dolby Atmos, it does high dynamic range video, wide color gamut, all this stuff. To me, this is like amazing, right? Um, and even if you have a 1080p TV, this thing does super sampling, which means it, it can basically make the, even the 1080p image look a lot sharper. So even if you hook it up to a 1080p TV and you have an S and you compare it to an X, you're going to see the X will even look better there sending out 1080p. But, you know, but again, it's all about graphics and speed. So, you know, if you, if you don't care if it takes, you know, 30 seconds to load your game instead of 10 seconds, and if you don't care about, you know, you want good graphics, but you don't need them to be over the top, that's really what you're paying for, which that extra $250. So they showed a ton of games. In fact, they tried to tout this as like their biggest lineup of games or maybe their best. Did any stand out to you as particularly notable and particularly any that took advantage of the new processor and all the high-tech specs of the Xbox One X? Well, pretty much everything they showed was xbox one x optimized and so that's one thing people need to realize is the xbox one s and the xbox one x play the same games so there's no game that's going to be released at least not right now that you that requires the xbox one x 
all games will play on both consoles, um, and even the original one as well. It's just, again, that visual fidelity. Um, so right off the bat, one thing that stuck out to me was Gears of War 4, and why that stuck out was because that game came out a while ago. And what they're doing there is they're basically showing that even games you already have can be updated. So Gears of War 4 is going to be updated for Xbox One X optimizations. So if you've already played it or if you haven't played it yet, you can get that game and download a patch. And that game will then be converted basically to 4K with Dolby Atmos surround sound. So I thought that was cool because it shows even the games you currently have in your library, like anything is fair game. Uh, to be updated, and that's a pretty big one. The other one for me was Assassin's Creed, the new Assassin's Creed that's set in Egypt. Um, they were showing some g- gameplay of that, and that just, you know, blew my mind as well. Forza Horizon, not Forza Horizon, Forza Motorsport 7 is going to have 700 cars in the game, which I, I believe the last one, Forza Motorsport 6, had 350 cars, which already people thought was insane. So this is 700 cars, um, again, 4K, HDR, Everything looked cool. And then there was Crackdown 3. That's another one. I've been waiting for this game. They announced it years ago. I thought they may have been canceling it. And then they, they showed it here. So it's launching alongside the Xbox One X. And Terry Crews is the star of this game. How can you go wrong with Terry Crews? Very true. Hey, so a couple things uh, s- struck me as interesting. One was, as I was watching all the games roll out, I wanted to see something new. It felt like a lot of sequels. Um, and, you know, with this new console, I wanted them to come out with something that was maybe a little bit different and refreshing instead of sort of the shooters and, and car racing games. I mean, I felt like apart from the resolution, you could have been looking at E3 from a few years ago. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. No, I think that's I think that's correct. And I mean, so one one new game they did show um, because sequels, you know, sequels are comfortable. Whether it's the movie industry or the gaming industry, sequels are comfortable. They see they performed before, so let's make another one. Um, one thing they did show was Anthem. It's a new game coming out of Electronic Arts. It's not an Xbox exclusive, but the Xbox version will be Xbox One X optimized. That is a new IP. It's never been, you know, this isn't like a sequel to anything. Brand new, brand new game. Um, and then there was also like Cuphead, which, you know, they announced that two years ago as well. And then we hadn't seen it. Basically, it looks like an old school cartoon, like not even from like a 60s cartoon. Um, but you're you're actually playing it. So you're controlling the characters that have this like super hand drawn look. It looks really good. But yeah, uh, for the most part, everything that you saw there was a sequel to something. Even Minecraft, like, you know, they're, they're releasing this 4K version of Minecraft with high dynamic range. And, it, you know, it when you compare them side by side to the the current Minecraft, it looks amazing, but it's still Minecraft. Like, you know, it's not like, you know, people, people know Minecraft. One of the most, it's one of the most popular things in the world. So um, it's not, you know, something new by any stretch of the imagination. It struck me on that Minecraft announcement that, you know, Minecraft is like the ultimate eight bit game. Who's really going to want to play it in 4k, but you're saying that there really could be an audience for a higher resolution Minecraft. Yeah, so the thing with Minecraft, because once they said for like, hey, we've we've updated this for 4K. So they did two things with Minecraft. One is it's the first console game that's going to be cross-platform. So whether you're playing Minecraft on the Xbox or on Windows or on Mac, um, they also announced a Nintendo Switch. Um, I think there was you know Android, a couple other platforms. Basically, no matter what platform you're on you can play against other people on different platforms. So you could be on an iPhone, I could be on my Xbox, and you can have someone else on a Nintendo Switch, and we can all be playing together, which, you know, cross-platform is super cool. People have been waiting for that forever. But yeah, the other thing, so when they said we're releasing a 4K update for Minecraft, I wasn't sure what they were going to show. And then when they showed it, it looked very similar to the current Minecraft. Um, But then afterwards, I got a backstage demo of everything. And when you put them side by side, Basically, what you see is, you know, currently Minecraft just has like, let's just say a flat blue sky. And in the new one, it would have like the sun would like the rays would come out of the sun and everything. And like the leaves of the trees would like cast shadows and things like that. So it just makes it it looks better, but it's still the same Minecraft. You can see further into the horizon and things like that. 
Um, but it's still, you know, the Minecraft you, you, you're familiar with and that you know and love. Very cool. We are talking with Andrew Edwards, who is on Skype from E3 in Los Angeles. We've been talking about Microsoft's new Xbox One X, and we're going to have a lot more coming up around the corner, including a surprise announcement at E3 involving the original Xbox, believe it or not. You're listening to Geared Up, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Geared Up on GeekWire and on the line from Los Angeles, where he's attending the big E3 video game convention, Andrew Edwards. It's great to have you on. Thank you so much. On location, which is kind of rare for us. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, we've just been talking about the new Xbox One X. Now, there was, toward the end of Microsoft's big E3 briefing, uh, an appearance of a logo that I, I like had to do a double take. It was the original Xbox logo up on stage, like complete with the little doo, 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 startup the animation. Yeah, the startup animation. <laughs> so explain why the original Xbox, the OG, made uh, made an appearance uh, at Microsoft's 2017 E3 briefing. Okay, well, I'm, c- I'm kind of confused, so I'll, I'll try to work through my confusion in this answer. So a few days ago, I believe it was Ars Technica released an article saying that for Xbox Live users, about 1.5% of their time is spent playing backwards compatible games. So that's a pretty low number, you know, out of 100% of your time, you spend 1.5% of it playing backwards compatible games. Um, but I don't know if that's accurate anymore because what Microsoft just announced was not only are they going to continue expanding the Xbox 360 backwards compatibility library to work with Xbox One. And this is both Xbox Ones, either One X or One S. This applies to both. So we're going to get more Xbox 360 games, but they're also now adding the original Xbox games to the backwards backwards compatibility uh, library, which is crazy, um, but also a pretty interesting idea. Because the more games that they're able to add to these consoles, you know, that just, you know, you, when you compare it against a PlayStation, let's just say PlayStation has 400 games. The Xbox One has, you know, a thousand games or whatever it might be. So they officially announced backwards compatibility for Xbox games, original Xbox games. So it's going to be selected Xbox games that can be played on the Xbox One. What struck me was that. Y- you know, the way the current backward compatibility program works with the Xbox 360 DVDs is that you can actually just put the DVD in, right? And then it recognizes it and sort of downloads a new version of the game. Right. But you need that original DVD, if I understand correctly. So, uh, so you can also download them from the, digitally from the store if you don't have the game. Okay, gotcha. Because I was wondering, like, who is going to be saving all of these original Xbox games? Right. Uh, but uh, obviously, then there'll be some sort of virtual ability to that's go back right and play the games. Okay. First title they announced was Crimson Skies. It was a popular original Xbox title, but obviously there'll be more to come. I am genuinely curious, though, how many people want to like sit down and play games that are like fifteen years old. Like that's not to me, something that really appeals to what I want to do. Well, but I'm curious, maybe for kids, like if these games are, you know, three bucks or five bucks and you get your kids an Xbox and you can just download a bunch of games, kids don't really care. Yeah. And hasn't Nintendo built a giant franchise just on that kind of nostalgia in a lot of ways? Yeah. Like my, for my age, um, nostalgia to me is like the 8 bit and 16 bit Nintendo titles, but nostalgia to someone 10 years younger than me might very well be, you know, that same feeling that I get from those old school Nintendo games is the feeling they get from these original Xbox games. Yeah. Okay. So that's coming out later this year as well. They did not give many details on this at all. So we've still got a ways to go to figure out exactly how it's going to work, which games are going to be included because it's certainly not going to be the entire original Xbox library. That said it, it has to include halo combat evolved, right? The original halo. I mean, it could, but the thing is, they've released the Halo Master Chief Collection on Xbox, which has, you know, the original Halo on it. It has all the Halo games that have current. Basically, all the Halo games that have ever been released are all already available as discs on the Xbox One. So to re-release it there is like, you know, it's already there. One other thing, though, they didn't mention in the keynote, but came out afterwards, is they're also re-releasing that horrible 
huge original Xbox controller. Remember the, that? The Duke, right? The Duke controller <laughs> is making a comeback and will be re-released to be compatible no. with the Xbox One. For people who don't know this story, the original Xbox controller was giant. And in fact, there's 87 pounds. There's a classic Penny Arcade cartoon. Uh, Penny Arcade is the very popular video game site and uh, online comic where they uh, like unveiled the uh, identity of whoever designed the Duke and he had giant hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that that controller is coming back. So for people who want to have the full retro old school experience you can pick up a new version of the duke controller do we know how much it's going to cost no no price yet but um you know i thought that was interesting well that is a must have as a hands-on review for the uh, future episode of geared up when, when that comes out right just because anything that's old is a must have for you are you picking up a new <laughs> xbox one x i you know something i'm here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take advantage of the price cut probably sooner than later to get a new xbox one s i knew it <laughs> now that it's old and got the price cut you're going with that one yeah although that said i have been toying with, this is a whole different discussion uh because my strategy typically with all these new devices is to take advantage of the new release to go after the one that's a year old at a lower price which i think is a perfectly valid consumer electronics acquisition strategy at any rate i was in the apple store this weekend andrew on a totally different topic i'm i'm this close to going to a new macbook pro with a touch bar Oh, okay. What's stopping you? Sounds like something's holding you back. The, the price is ridiculous because I want to get one with 16 gigs of RAM and uh, actually a Core i7 would be awesome to have. And so when I start putting that in the online cart, I mean, the price is getting pretty ridiculous if you go with the touch bar option. Well, let me, I can give you a piece of advice and this actually goes up to anybody out there. Um, the, the difference is on these MacBook Pros, between the i5 and the i7 are very minimal to the point where they really only apply to people who are doing like super heavy lifting, like video editing, 3D modeling, um, you know, app coding, things like that. So, you know, for things like audio, you, you really can very, very comfortably get away with an i5. And that would cut, you know, a few hundred dollars off of the price. Yeah, no, understood. My other big stumbling block is just picking the right USB-C hub. Uh, so that, <laughs> that's easy. I might need I, your you advice. Ask me. Just ask me. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a preferred brand on the USB-C hubs? Let's hear it. Yeah. The nicest one that I've found, um, you know, because these things, you know, there's so many of them out there. Um, but the ones that you really want are ones that are not you just USB-C but that are really Thunderbolt 3. And so the difference is, you know, there's so many hubs out there. A USB-C hub will be USB 3.0 or maybe USB 3.1 speeds. So everything you plug into that hub will be either, you know, 10 gigabits speed or 5 gigabit speed versus if you get a Thunderbolt 3 hub, it's 40 gigabits for everything. And they're not that much more expensive. So the one I really like is called the Hyperdrive. And um, it plugs into both ports on one side of the computer. So it takes up both those ports. And then it gives you that port back on the hub, as well as HDMI, SD card. I think it has two USB 3 slots on it, um, audio. And um, it looks really nice. And it's held in place very st firmly because it takes two ports to plug it in. So that would be my recommendation. Anybody out there with a new MacBook Pro looking for a new hub, look up the hyperdrive and you can even get it color matched to your to your computer so you can get it in space gray or silver excellent well thank you for the impromptu uh, macbook pro advice and uh, thanks for all the insights on the xbox one x it's great that you're down there at e3 and uh, we'll see you back here at the office next week that's right i'll be in next week and i'm definitely excited and looking forward to getting my hands on the Xbox One X. I had my hands on it yesterday, actually, but it wasn't plugged into anything. So <laughs> I actually want to like use it. So, you know, stay tuned here on Geared Up for about four months from now. <laughs> Perfect. All right. That's Andrew Edwards down at E3 in Los Angeles. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time on Geared Up on GeekWire. Thanks for listening to Geared Up, the weekly tech and gadget podcast. Check out more of Andrew's reviews at youtube.com slash gear live and follow all of our coverage at geekwire.com.